Hello and welcome to today's video. So as you can see, I've got a table full of the amazing Retro Gamer magazine. Now this magazine's published in the UK. It looks at classic video games right back to the very earliest days of the, the sort of mid to late 1970s, uh, bang up to like the last sort of couple of generations of consoles. It's absolutely stacked with stuff. And uh, I was lucky enough that a friend of mine gave me, well, there must be a hundred issues here, including some of the big thick specials as well. So I count myself extremely lucky uh, to be given these literally for free. So how amazing is that? But I thought, well, while I work my way through these because uh, it's going to take me quite some time I thought what would be pretty cool is if I maybe split it into two lots and I actually filmed going through these issues now alas they don't start from number one they start from I, I believe around number 70 or so uh, but then they're bang up to the very latest issue as I film this which uh, um, looking at it I think is in the uh, 140s somewhere so uh, quite a nice little run of mags to go through so that will be the subject of today's video so sit back relax and let's get to it Okay then, so the earliest one we've got is number 68 here. And this one, well, the cover story on this is the classic Atari Asteroids by the look of it. Um, absolutely fantastic. One of the things you'll notice about Retro Gamer as you go through them is that the design of it is absolutely superb. And I really like the way they've got the original, uh, like the spacecraft uh, that would dot around in asteroids on the front. Um, also, they do like a making of feature. So in this one, it's got the making of Super Sprint, which was a great little racer. I remember playing that in the arcade and uh, it had sort of like um, a three steering wheels on the front. There it is, Super Sprint. Um, just fantastic. I, I have to thank my friend Mark who gave me uh, gave me these. It's just awesome, really, really, really incredible. So obviously we can't. We got far too many to go through to to examine every issue in detail. But as we go through, I just sort of give the issue numbers. So this is sixty nine. Um, the complete and um, what's in it. So this is the complete history of Final Fantasy from the NES hit. Twenty two years of RPG brilliance. That's cool. Tales from Monkey Island. That was the uh, the Lucas one, wasn't it? Um, yeah, the creators returned to Millie Island, and let's play. Let's all play Paperboy. Yes, why not? That was number seventy. Seventy one here then is the Sega Classic Afterburner, which I loved. I mean, that and Outrun were. I guess my favourite Sega arcade games. Um, also, look, 25 years of Crash. Oliver Frey yeah, did the original uh, jacket. I used to have a complete run of Crash magazine. Uh, number 72. The untold story behind the Spectrum's infamous port of Gradius. So I'm giving you the numbers on these because it may be particular issues. You think, ah, I've got to read that one. And if you know the issue number, you can easily look it up. Now, I do believe uh, Retro Gamer is available online. Uh, you can download them directly from the website. Um, uh, but also you might want to pick up a secondhand issue off places like eBay, somewhere like that. Um, so number 73 here, The Ultimate Hero, the full story of Rare Saberman. So this is what um, came out on Ultimate Play the Game on the Spectrum. And uh, the Commodore 64, um, Sable Wolf, was a fantastic, fantastic game. I remember playing it so well when that one came out. It was the first game, I believe, that I paid a tenner for. <laughs> um, it was quite expensive. Um, Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins for number 74. Your definitive guide to Sir Arthur's ghoulish adventures. That's a hard game. Ghouls and Ghosts is a hard... Uh, Ghouls and Goblins is a hard old game. Then. Um... We're all doomed, number 75. John Romero, Wolfenstein's 3D's co-creator, takes over the magazine. This is a look at Wolfenstein and the making of Atari's Road Blasters up there in the uh, top right corner. Um, number 76 then, Game Room. So this does this um, this doesn't look at anything per se, um, uh, except uh, Microsoft. So it says inside, behind the scenes of Microsoft's digital arcade. Hmm, not sure about that at all. Number 77 is a uh, look at Prince of Persia, the classic uh, original Prince of Persia there, and a look at the co-op, uh, uh, the coin-op uh, Super Hang-On. And why you must play Hypersports, that was a game and a half, wasn't it? <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. so number 78 then is a look at Lara Croft, so loving Lara. 
celebrating the adventures of everyone's favourite silicon chick. I remember playing uh, the original Tomb Raider when that one came out. And what's this? This is uh, number this is number 79 here. It's looking at Rainbow, Rainbow Islands. Trying to get them all into shot here. Rainbow Islands with a definitive guide to Centipede. Also look at Star Fox 64 for the N64. This is number 80, your ultimate guide to Konami's 16-bit shooter, Axel Lay. I don't think I remember that one. Coin Up Capers is Akari Warriors. That was a really great, uh, great arcade game. I really loved that one. I want to look at Lords of Midnight. That was that great Spectrum RPG, wasn't it? I remember seeing that one and loving, loving that one. Uh, number 81 is Laser Squad. What did that come out on? I don't know. Number 81. 82, 25th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers. So that's uh, really good. And uh, that's quite handy. This one does date this particular issue, number 85, uh, in 2010. So at least we know how old these uh, these issues are. I did actually have a, an article printed in one of the very early issues of Retro Gamer on um, Nintendo Game & Watches, which I used to have a... Uh, well, a full set of, in fact. Um, number 83, so it was 82. Number 83 is a uh, look at Donkey Kong. And it's got a fold-out cover here, Donkey Kong Country Returns. It's got a little, little crease in the cover there, number 83. Number 84, 25 years of Rare. I bet that's a good issue. I just loved all the original um rare or ultimate play the game they were initially weren't they and then they got bought by microsoft uh nintendo rather and um became rare and published such great games as uh, goldeneye and perfect dark number 85 here secret of mana another uh massive rpg game now i think what we're going to do there i'm just going to Put these because we're running a little bit out of room. I'm just going to put these over into the corner of the screen over there, like so. So we've got a bit more room to look at these in this next pile here. So number eighty-six, the making of Star Glider, isometric revolution. So once again, that was very similar to. Um, well, this is in the days of the Spectrum, and you had isometric viewpoint games such as uh, Underworld. Um, no, not Underworld. It was. Um, it wasn't even Sable Wolf, was it? It was Alien 8 was one of the ones. I think that's where that's from. Um, and was it Night Lore? And Batman 3D. Uh, these were all isometric games. Good stuff. Number 87, The Collector's Guide to the N64. So if you're thinking of collecting the N64, I bet you the stuff in here is going to be your sort of go-to guide, really, for uh, for that system. Oh, look, and the making of Jet Set Willy 2. That was so tough, wasn't it? Missile Command says number 88. Looking at Missile Command. That was great on the coin up. Absolutely uh, amazing, that. And then number 89 is a comprehensive look at the Commodore 64. Yes, yeah, so I had lots of friends here at Commodore 64s, but I didn't have one myself. Um, I was always a sort of a Spectrum kid. Oh, no, that's a nice one, isn't it? Number 90, look at that. Just like the original cartridge in gold. Wow, that is lovely, isn't it? 25 years of Zelda, the collector's edition. Look at that. That's just really, really nice, isn't it? They've gone to town on that. I told you the design of this magazine was really nice and that. That's exceptional. That's a really, really great one. Number 90. 91, another sort of metallic one. This is 20 years of Sonic the Hedgehog. Absolutely love Sonic. Who doesn't, eh? Oh, these are great, isn't it? There's so much to have a look through on this. This is number 92. This is the end of the, uh, this is another Crash cover that's been used, an Oliver Frey cover from Crash magazine. I'm not sure if that was the very final issue of Crash, but it says game over for the 8-bit. Uh, computer space, this is the very, very earliest arcade machines. This is from, I think, by 1972, 
this was, um, and this is a super, that's basically the very earliest of all. I have actually played that, uh, played one of those uh, exhibition in London. Number 94 here, Maniac Mansion, another Lucasfilm game. Also 10 years of the Game Boy Advance, another one of my absolute favorite systems. And if you look on my channel, you'll see a lot of these retro games I do play on my just on my mobile phone now I've done video guides to almost all the retro uh, consoles out there including the more up to date ones uh, up to as far as the PlayStation 2 uh, backwards so we've done the GameCube the uh, the uh, Nintendo Wii uh, Game Boy Advance all the Game Boy systems Dreamcast Mega Drive so if you want to play those on your mobile phone I have done plenty of emulator videos to show you how to get those up and running um, Number 95, a game I absolutely love to death, still do to this day, and that's Bubble Bubble. Um, I completed it a couple of times in the arcade back in the day, uh, but it was with a, a friend, so it was two of us playing um, to try and complete it, and we did get to the uh, 99th floor and finish it off, which was awesome. Number 96 is a look at Final Fantasy VII. Another massive game in its day, wasn't it? This a huge game for the PlayStation 1. Also, the history of uh, Ultimate's Jetpack. Another great, great game. Oh, this is making me want to go off and play some retro gaming right now. <laughs> uh, number 97. Uh, look at cover tapes. Who remembers getting cover tapes in your old magazines? Um, also from the archives, a look at Frogger and the making of Zap 64, which was the Commodore 64's equivalent of Crash magazine. This one I absolutely love. I'm a huge Metal Slug fan. Every single version of it, I've tried to play as far into it as I can. Um, I don't think I've ever completed any of them, uh, even on sort of endless play. Um, the one I can recommend, if you do want an emulator, you can get the free PPSSPP emulator, and you can get the Metal Slug anthology for that one. And that's the one I would recommend you get, because it's fantastic. Yeah, if you've never tried Metal Slug, it's just, just the business, I tell you. Just the business. Number 99 then, the old ZX81 classic, 3D Monster Maze. That was a that was a game and a half. I mean, just phenomenal what it could get out of 16K. Just incredible. And then number 100, anniversary issue, is just the Retro Gamer Special Edition. It's like an all-encompassing look at 100 issues of Retro Gamer. How cool is that? Wow, we... That's really good, isn't it? And we've got a few more before we uh, need to move this pile. So this is a look at the history of the original Metal Gear. Plus, Ocean's The Great Escape, which is where that covers from. I'm a huge uh, Escape fan. And uh, for the spectrum, yeah, Ocean did a version of the, the Great Escape, which was just incredible. Um, just a couple more, I think, and then we're going to have to pull the camera out a bit farther. Uh, Star Wars X-Wing Saga. That was sort of the one that came after X-Wing and TIE Fighter on the PC. Then you got X-Wing Saga. It was, it was very, very good. Um, but I, I prefer the original ones, to be honest. Number 103. 40 Reasons Why Atari Changed Gaming. So look at the Atari 2600. There's an original Woody on the front. Plus the making of Double Dragon. A classic sort of beat-em-up game. And then 104, we're going to need to pull the, the camera out a little bit, is 40 years of Pong, the Atari Pong, plus a complete guide to the Vectrex. That might be handy for someone. That was a, a fantastic system. Uh, I lament the day I, I had to uh, sell a lot of my retro game stuff. I had to, to draw a line under it, and um, I had an almost complete library of Vectrex stuff. And my actual boxed console went to Brazil, of all places. I, I mean, it sold for about... 200 odd pounds and then to send it to brazil it was like sending a tv abroad that cost another two three hundred pounds the, the guy who bought it gladly paid so uh who knows where that one ended up but it was uh yeah a, a pang of regret getting rid of my vetrex collection sadly but there you go anyway um let me just pull the camera out again so we can have a look at the last sort of wedge okay so 105 is the origin of EA Games, Electronic Arts. Yeah, they're certainly a, a force to be reckoned with today, but back then, wow, that was their early days. I sort of remember that quite well. 
Number 107 is 30 Years of Robotron. That was a tough game. Even at the time, it was a tough game. I used to be amazed watching people in the arcades who could handle both, you know, one joystick would be for the gun and one would be for the movement. People who could just do that intuitively. They were just, uh, I would always be in awe of those sorts of gamers. Um, number 108 is Psychosis, the end of an era. Psychosis, who remembers that? I seem to remember, was it on the Amiga? I had that one, or the Atari. Oh, look at this. This is a lovely one. So 109, The Ultimate Years, the untold story of how the stampers defined 8-bit gaming. There we are. Look at this. Some real classics there. Cookie, Trans Am. Psst. Luna Jetpack, Luna Jetman. Some good Attic Attack, Sabre Wolf. That's an issue I'll be enjoying, that's for sure. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, number 110, then, Nintendo Legends. So this is looking at um, the story behind Kyoto's greatest gaming icons. Plus, it looks like uh, they're having a chat with Jeff Minter. And a look at Mickey Mouse's World of Evolution. That was a game and a half, wasn't it? Oh, and look at that. 20 Years of the Scum emulator. That's the one that emulates those classic uh, like Monkey Planet ones. Number 112 then, the 30 greatest ever power-ups. Classic developers reveal their all-time favourites and exclusive to the creations of power-ups. Oh, there you go. Plus an interview with Sid Meier. I don't like the way they've got these 499s on. That spoils it for me. Um, number 111, 20 Sega games that you've never played. I reckon I might have played them, but Load Runner I definitely played. 100 and... That was 111. This is 113, so maybe we're missing one. But this is uh, looks like the ultimate guide to the Amiga 500. And that was a system and a half, wasn't it? I mean, I, I had an Amiga. I bought one when they were sort of you could get one cheap for like 20 quid second hand and then there was a massive library um and groups that you could just trade sort of discs with it was incredible oh, 114 dragon's lair 30 years of it i played it in the arcades loved it at the time uh when it came out it was on laser disc wasn't it and then they did the sequel uh, space ace um today the original Animation it's absolutely fantastic. Don Bluth did the did the animation, but the um, the game to play now is is not that great. SimCity, yeah, um, this is number one hundred and fifteen. Who remembers SimCity? Um, I enjoyed SimCity two thousand. That was my favourite, and I played that one for a long, long time. Yeah, Will Wright, um, great, great coder from back in the day. One hundred and sixteen is a look at Lucas Arts. They're the guys who did X Wing versus Tie Fighter, amongst many other things. Perhaps my uh, and the, the, the great Indiana Jones games as well. Perhaps one of my greatest um, retro publishers is Lucas Arts. One hundred and what number is this? It's on the spine here. One hundred and seventeen. So look at the Sega Master System. There's the original Master System before it got redesigned. Not bad. I used to, um, you know, like, oh, 269 power game. I used to collect the, the Master System, and I had perhaps about half the games for it. Um, but, you know, I'd play the Master System, and you could get a lot more enjoyment from the Mega Drive, and it just looked better. Um, I've still got a few ma odd Master System games in my collection, the Star Wars ones and what have you. Um, Flashback, another game that uh, I never really got into. It, it, I know it was amazing for its day, but just not one that I... Uh, particularly light and um, this one's also got 30 years of the ness now we're on issue 119 so this is qbert and a look at monster mash 120 is shadow run who remembers shadow run and 25 game icons from minor willy to mario there's minor willy from manic minor and of course uh jesse willy Oh, that's another lovely, another metallic cover. I guess that first one must have sold very well. So this is uh, issue 121. And this is a look at uh, the Windmaker. This was um, uh, for Zelda, the Wind Walker, which was on the GameCube, wasn't it? So uh, 
Another lovely, that was that beautiful cell shaded one. This game is actually completely playable and playable very well on the Dolphin emulator. Now, so you can play it on your Android phone. So as I said, if you are interested in doing that, just check those in um, those videos on my channel because it's quite, quite possible now and it looks and feels lovely to play. Now there's something you don't see very often, uh, um, RG122, uh, the Panasonic one. I remember having one of these through my hands and I immediately got rid of it because it was just awful, but probably super rare. Came with a few games as well. Salamander, what's this? This is one, two, number 123. Ah, oh, yes, uh, it's uh, uh, an N64 game, Cinemaware. Um, Early racing games here for number one, two, four. So it looks like it's got some pole position. Super Mario, Outrun, Outrun 2. Um, looks like an interview with David Crane on Pitfall. This is one, two, five. Paperboy delivers for 30 years. Do, 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 do. Brilliant stuff. I love Paperboy. Um, who remembers the arcade game with handlebars on it? Just incredible, wasn't it? Oh well, look, Sinistar. Do you remember that? He would. He was the one who spoke when it. I live. <laughs> Just a handful more for this first half. Night Lore, another brilliant ultimate play of the game. Issue one hundred and twenty six. This is, and uh, thirty years of Night Lore. Played it to death. Um, finished it. Loved it. What an amazing game. Just amazing. Just angled the camera up a little bit so we can get these last few in. So this is number 127. It's when arcades ruled the world. Look at that. That's a great jacket, isn't it? I don't remember any arcades that were as spacious as that. They were all crammed in. Oh, I was going to say if they got a sit-down Star Wars, and there it is over there. I remember I was I got offered a sit-down Star Wars, the original arcade, for 50 quid, but it was broken. And um, why well, I didn't just pick it up, I have no idea. I just didn't have anywhere for it. I was only in a little flat at the time, so I didn't really have any room. Um, number 128 is The Making of Golden Axe, um, plus 25 top Saturn games. And I look at the Game Boy, the original, original Game Boy, 25 years of that one. And I think that's probably about halfway through the collection. So I think we'll call it there. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this first look through these amazing collection of retro gamers. They certainly are amazing, aren't they? And, uh, well, there's some there's some real memories in there. So I hope also, uh, by me going through and giving you the numbers, if there are particular issues that you want to track down, you'll now be able to just jump onto places like eBay or even the Retro Gamer site to download them in a digital form so that you can, uh, you can read them yourself. Um, if you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to play some of the retro games that you've seen here, on your mobile phone. Don't forget to check out some of my uh, how-to guides to get retro emulators up and running on your Android devices. Um, thank you very much for watching today, and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.